I think I'd rather fuck my egg than have just have sex in general. What's wrong with you? Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Geary's Kitchen. This is gonna be a very special stream to celebrate me in my new skin of sorts. I'm gonna be making tonkatsu ramen from scratch. So I'm gonna make the soup from scratch. I'm gonna make the tashu from scratch along with the other side dishes like ramen eggs and um, the seasoned bamboo shoots. And I'm also gonna be making the noodles from scratch as well, which is gonna be a little bit of a challenge. As always, if you guys wanna see more content from me, you guys know what to do already. Uh, make sure you press the like button, the subscribe button, the notification bell, all those wonderful things so you can keep up with all my updates. And yeah, let's just jump into it. I'm excited to cook for everyone. Let's go. So we're gonna get started on the ramen soup first. Ramen soup in and of itself, it's not very complicated. It's just basically a bunch of bones. The Japanese word tonkotsu is basically the word for pig and the word for bone. Basically, it contains what the name says already. It's just basically a bunch of pork bones. And then you're just boiling the shit out of it so that the natural bone marrow and proteins and collagen can seep out of the bone itself and leach into the soup. And that's what gives it the milky look. This kind of ramen, you do not need to add MSG. I think Uncle Roger heard hallucinating replay replay this kind of ramen you do not need to add msg no, no. this is just the leg bone of the pig and then i just asked the butcher to chop it up for me i would recommend pork bone obviously if you want to stay true to the name tonkatsu it should be pork bone but um if you really can't find it i would say beef bone is okay as well. I wouldn't really recommend chicken because I feel like chicken bones might be a little bit too fragile for the boiling process that ramen is because ramen, you really want to keep the water continuously boiling. You're not simmering. You're having a ro rolling boil the whole time. And I also got two pig feet. This is also kind of important because if you've noticed when you're going into a ramen shop, the tokotsu broth is not just soupy. It's also a little sticky sometimes when you kind of like... Mm, like when your lips a little bit, it kind of sticks to your mouth a little bit. And that's actually the collagen doing that. Collagen is really good for your skin and makes your skin nice and plump, but it also makes the soup more luscious, more rich, a little thicker and more smooth without, without adding extra fat per se. You know, there's really n nothing else in the soup. I'm gonna fill this pot with water because I'm gonna blanch it first. Blanching just means that I'm going to boil it for maybe like actively boiling for five or 10 minutes, not very long. And that's going to slightly cook the meat and also get rid of any nasty blood flavor that's coming from the bones itself. I'm just gonna go to the sink and I'm gonna fill this with water. Nothing super fancy. Pom Pom, entertain the chat, please. You know, sometimes I feel like a fish leaping over and over again, always trying to get somewhere. Though, I don't know where, only to find myself in the jaws of a best beast. Best girl, Pom Pom is best girl. I'm just gonna wait for this to boil, and then once it boils for five minutes or so, I'm going to throw the water out. Do not keep the water, throw the water out. While this is boiling, I'm gonna roll up the pork belly. This is just regular pork belly that I got from the butcher once once again. I just tried to get the leanest cut that they have. This was as lean as I could get it. What you wanna do is you grab your sheet of pork and then you kind of roll it into like a tight log, as tight as you can get it. So when we're actually cooking it, we're going to slice it this way. I'm gonna get a piece of string and then I'm going to try my best to tie a knot at the end of one of the ends. Try to leave a little bit extra. And so now that you have your knot with your extra string or whatever, I'm just going to bring it to the other side of the pig now. I'm going to wrap it as, as close to the edge as I can. So when it unravels, it won't unravel too much. And then I'm just going to basically swirl the knot around little by little. And then I'm just going to use the extra piece that I saved earlier. And I'm just going to tie another knot. I just need to cut this. We're gonna set aside until we actually need it. This is pretty much done. We, we don't need this anymore until we're actually gonna be cooking it, which is gonna be a little bit later. I'm actually gonna wait until the ramen soup is ready to be consistently boiling before I start the pig, because I'm gonna move the pot over here to my other stove so it can boil forever and ever, basically, until it's ready. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a lot of like foam there's a lot of foam coming up 
onto the soup now and that's the blood that's basically what i was saying the scum the scum is basically the extra debris and the blood that's being um boiled out of the pork bones and also the pork feet the pig feet right now i'm gonna use this time to kind of get some aromatics ready and the aromatics are basically there to kind of help get rid of some of the stanky meat taste that you might get sometimes if your meat isn't clean well enough things like ginger green onion and sake are there to kind of reduce some of the nasty taste that you might taste in like soups and stuff usually soups taste nice and clear and everything and nice and fresh because there are some aromatics that are there to kind of counter oh that are there to counteract some of the strong taste that meat has we're just gonna cut a few slices these slices do not have to be perfect because we're not gonna be eating these you're not gonna be showing these to like your customers or whatever so don't worry about it being like kind of ugly or whatever no one's gonna see it and keep the skin on i don't really know why but all the recipes that I have looked up on YouTube when I was studying to learn how to make this for the stream, um, everyone just leaves the skin on. So I'm gonna leave the skin on as well. Cute cards is not cheating if I made the cute cards myself. Please, it's not cheating. Yo mama, be okay, that's, that's too strong. <laughs> that's too personal now. <laughs> So I think this is more or less okay. And I'm going to bring this to the sink so I can dump everything out. I'm also going to rinse it a little bit under cold water. I'm just gonna take my time and kind of uh, rinse every piece of the leg bone so that there's no like, extra shards of bone still stuck to it, okay? Uh, Oni bro, you can take the mic pack off now because I'm back. I'm just going to replace the water that I had earlier with filtered water now. Earlier, I didn't use filtered water because I'm only blanching the meat. I'm not actually drinking the soup. So now that I'm actually drinking the soup, I replace it with filter water. I'm not saying you have to use filter water, but if you do have it on hand, it will be a really nice um, type of water to use, like RO water, filter water, what have you. And I'm just gonna put them in here and just two stalks of onion. Uh, just cut it in half. We're not chopping it or anything, only in half so it actually fits into the pot. And I'm just gonna add a splash of sake. You can use cooking wine, but I do happen to have Japanese sake with me. This is just a regular drinking sake. So I'm just gonna use this. You can just eyeball it, it's not a big deal. It's just making soup, we're not making science. So um, I'm just gonna add a splash of it. Everything hurts, chat, I'm so old. Everything hurts. Oh, I can do the tare. Tare is basically the salt part of the ramen noodle. So usually if you watch like ramen videos or whatever, you notice that they small spoon of something like a soy sauce type of base first, and then they, soup, they spoon the soup in. The soup itself has no salt in it. The soup is only the essence of the protein that the ramen master has put in and then they have a separate sauce which is called tare which is the salt which brings the saltiness into the soup so the tare i'm gonna make is actually gonna be seafood based seafood is gonna add a little bit of extra umami into the tare compared to just doing like water and soy sauce and stuff like that so i'm gonna be using frozen clams i'm gonna fill it with some water I'm going to turn the stove on. I'm going to wait to let it boil first. And once it boils, I'm going to say pom pom. I'm going to wait for this to boil. And once it's boiled, I'm going to strain the soup out. I'm going to discard the extra clam. And then I'm going to add, start seasoning everything else. All the ingredients for ramen, it will taste better if you let it rest in the fridge overnight. So same thing with ramen as well. If you let it rest overnight, it, it gives the noodles a chance to rehydrate. So it won't be as dry and crumbly, I guess. So you want to make sure that you give all your ingredients a fair chance to kind of soak up all the flavors and everything as well. That's why we're going to make sure that everything has a good enough time to soak overnight before we do anything i strained out the clams and then you can just throw away the clams you don't need them anymore you can eat them if you want to but i'm just gonna throw it away because you don't really need uh, too much of it anymore in terms of like seasoning there's really not a lot a not going on when it comes to making ramen it's actually quite simple and straightforward when you're seasoning this do not season it to the perfect saltiness you want to season this um so that it's extra extra salty so that when you're actually mixing it into the soup it'll actually be more balanced. You want to do almost equal parts soy sauce to um, tare. 
soy sauce to the water, sorry. And then you're gonna add a bit of mirin. Mirin is gonna be a nice healthy splash. That was probably like, I don't know, a quarter cup, a third cup, something like that. Fish sauce. I'm gonna do a nice healthy glug of fish sauce. So this is where it becomes interesting. So I found this particular recipe where it calls for sake kasu. So sake kasu is a very unique ingredient where it's the byproduct that's left over when you're making sake. So it's the leftover byproduct like a rice or something when it's fermenting to make sake. Sake kasu is kind of an impossible ingredient for me to find. I thought about it and I think the next best option is Chinese fermented rice wine. It's called mi jiu. Mi jiu is right, rice and then wine. Um, it's actually a really interesting ingredient we use in Chinese cuisine. We can put it in uh, savory soups and also sweet soups. It kind of warms your body. It's not really super high in alcohol content, if at all anyways. And it has like a really nice, sweet, perfumated uh, smell and taste. Very, very similar to what sake would taste like. Uh, okay, Oni bro, can you open it for me? I don't have a thing. I'm just gonna pour a little bit in. I don't remember how much the recipe calls for, but I'm just gonna pour a little bit in. And we're only adding it in to give it a little bit of that sweet taste. It's not there to like season anything. Don't worry about it. It's only there for a little aromatic. I'm gonna add some honey. Okay, this honey is taking forever. I'm just gonna leave the spoon in there. And then I'm just gonna get some salt and season. So this is pretty much done. The tare is pretty much done. I'm gonna let this keep boiling for a little bit though. So now that it's boiling, I'm actually gonna turn the water down to a simmer. We're not actually starting to make the actual tonkatsu yet. This is still the preliminary stages. I'm gonna have a taste. It should be salty though, so don't worry. If it's too salty, don't be alarmed. It's supposed to be very salty because you're supposed to add a little bit into the soup, not a crazy amount. Mmm clammy and soy saucy. The sauce is basically done now, the tare. We're finished with the tare. One last step is we're gonna put a piece of kombu in there so it can season the tare even further. Kombu is unique in that it can only release most of its flavor when the temperature of the water is sub boiling. Something this big. I don't know. I'm gonna put it in there. It's gonna sit there overnight. And I'm gonna put this in the fridge once this cools down. And tomorrow we're gonna be able to use this as tare. You see this pom pom? No one cares about petting me. Everyone cares about petting you though. What the fuck? So we're gonna make the chashu now. The chashu as well takes quite a bit of time to kind of boil and become tender. What we're gonna do is we're going to put the pork belly in the pot. We're gonna put some water into the pot and then we're gonna continue boiling down the chashu until it becomes nice and tender. Because pork skin takes a lot longer to cook than the actual meat of the pork itself on the inside, instead of putting the pork in this way into the pot, I'm actually gonna turn it around. So the bottom is actually, the top is actually at the bottom. So we're gonna make sure that the pork belly is put in uh, upside down so that the skin is touching the bottom of the pot where most of the heat is coming from. And then we're gonna boil it from there. I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna put a shit ton of water in there. I'm gonna throw in a few more onions and gingers. Again, this is all to help get rid of some of the nasty porky taste that you wouldn't really want in your uh, chashu. I'm gonna do a few more slices of the green onion. Okay. And then I'm gonna do a few more slices of the ginger. And then again, I'm gonna add some sake and I'm gonna add some mirin. I'm just gonna throw the whole onion in. We're not eating the onion. The onion's only there to season the water. And I'm gonna get a few cloves of garlic to crush up. However much you want to put in, it's up to you. I like garlic, so I'm just gonna put in a bit of extra garlic. I'm just using the back of my hand and the flat part of my knife to kind of give it a good smack. We're not cutting it, and then we're just gonna put everything into the water. You know what? This is gonna be two hours. I'm gonna put this here. Sometimes I usually make stock on a rice cooker. Yeah, you totally can do that, but usually stock in a rice cooker is more so slow cooked, but for tonkatsu, you can't do that because tonkatsu um, needs to be a uh, roaring boil. Like it has to tumble the bones and stuff to get the extra like blood and stuff out. If you're only doing a slow cook, you're never gonna get um, a really milky broth. It's only gonna be nice and clear. If you're looking for that, that's totally fine, but for tonkatsu, it needs to be milky and that's basically the bone marrow and the fats inside the bone and you can only extract it from actually aggravating like boiling it in a very 
aggressive way. We're gonna start doing the ramen noodles now. I have a kitchen scale because you're gonna need it, especially for making ramen. Exact measurements are quite important when it comes to making ramen. It measures to the gram because that's what I'm gonna be using. I recommend that you do not eyeball this part because if you get the ratio wrong, you're gonna get really nasty noodles. And then being at bottom also takes time, so go easy on yourself. No! I was not born a bottom, okay? I w I'm not even a bottom. I just, I just say that I'm a bottom to make you guys feel better. So you guys don't get intimidated by me. I can smell the I'm gonna grab a lid. I'm supposed to put a lid on top of this so the water doesn't fully evaporate. I'm just gonna leave this half covered. When will Uncle Roger be a guest so that he can... <laughs> Why? What, what makes you think I can't roast him? Maybe I can teach him a thing or two about cooking. Maybe, maybe he doesn't know how to make ramen and I can teach him a thing or two. It would be really cool if I could get Uncle Roger to collab with me though. <laughs> What I have is noodle flour. This is just from the Chinese grocery store. I really don't know what the difference between bread flour and noodle flour is, but from the recipe that I found, they used noodle flour instead of bread flour. I am assuming you can substitute noodle flour with bread flour, but because my grocery store actually had the noodle kind, that's the one that I'm gonna use. If you're making regular noodles, normally 35% hydration or 40% hydration is good enough. But for tonkotsu ramen, I read that you want the noodle as dry as possible. That way, when you're putting the cooked noodles in the soup, it will soak up the soup like a sponge and it'll make the two noodles taste very, very yummy. Me. What hydration just means is um, the ratio of water to flour. Right now, I'm gonna do 30% hydration. So basically, if I have 400 grams of noodle flour, I'm only supposed to put in 120 grams of water and six grams of lye water. So water and lye water combined equals to the actual uh, hydration of it. Four hundred. I'm gonna get water in a separate container. Uh, water, like I said, is 120 grams. You wanna go slow because the, the exact measurements are quite important. So lye water is this. Uh, lye water is basically a mixture of water and potassium carbonate solution. So that gives it a kind of like a basic, like basic on the pH scale, kind of like a bitter, it's hard to describe what basic taste tastes like, but it's kind of like a little bit of like a bitter taste, a little bit of an astringent taste, but potassium carbonate is actually very, very important for making ramen noodles because the lye water is what makes the noodles chewy and bouncy. So I'm gonna do six grams. I wanna make sure that the water and the potassium carbonate solution or like the lye water basically is nice and well mixed evenly and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a pair of chopsticks or like a fork or something and then slowly little by little we're gonna drizzle in the water into the noodle and as we're drizzling we're gonna just use the chopsticks and slowly swirl the noodles in take your time don't pour everything in because this is a very low hydration noodle it will not come together into a dough very quickly so if you put all the water in it's just gonna turn into like a dry lump it's not gonna be a dough anymore tiny 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 bit it looks like it's not gonna make, make much of a difference but just keep doing it there's gonna be a lot of first today either i fail really miserably or i succeed somewhat we're almost on the water almost we're gonna keep going and there's also one thing to keep an eye out for is depending on where you live your house might be a different humidity compared to another person so if you live in somewhere like canada for example where i live where it tends to be drier in the winter um, you might want to add in a little bit more water compared to the recipe and if you live in like a tropical area where it's very very moist and humid then you want to add a little bit less water so unfortunately making dough is a little bit finicky it is a little bit of a guesswork no matter how accurate you get it to some certain degree there is a little bit of um guesswork you can see how the dough is coming together slowly chat so now that the water is done we're not making a dough yet we're actually going to stick our hands in and we're actually going to just kind of massage the dough a little bit 
with our hands just to make extra sure that the water content is um, dispersed evenly through the dough. Because as you're like flicking it with your chopsticks and everything, obviously there's going to be little pieces of like flour and stuff maybe left behind that doesn't touch the water. So this is just an extra step to do to make sure that every piece of flour has a little bit of water inside and that you don't have any dry patches. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put the dough. We're not going to make it into a dough. We're not going to knead it whatsoever. We're actually going to put it directly into a Ziploc bag and we're going to let that rest for 30 minutes. So just squeeze it a little bit, get all the air out. And then basically your dough is pretty much done. I'm just going to kind of flatten it a little bit with my hands. This extra time will allow it to kind of fully hydrate, make sure the water seeps into every piece of the dry flour. I'm going to seal it and let that wait for like 30 minutes. I guess there's just gonna be a lot of waiting now. There's really not much else to do. You want me to bust a move? Okay, here. Are you guys ready for my flossing? Do the Fortnite dance chug jug. How do you do the chug jug dance? Like this? I feel like I'm milking a cow right now. I'm gonna feed Pom Pom some snacks, okay? Pom Pom, you're the goodest girl. You deserve all the head pats. I'm like Chat. Chat is not the goodest girl. Chat is all stinky, and they deserve to be petted by a rake. Are you sure, Joe? All right, you asked for it. Oh, oh! It's a piece of cake. Make a pretty cake. It's the way it's lazy. You gotta do the cooking by the book. You know you can be lazy. Then you have Don't bring it down, bitch. Let me see you back it up. Shut that ass down, load it, pick that motherfucker. Don't bring it down, bitch. <laughs> I slapped Pop Pop's face. I slapped Pop Pop's face. I wanted to twerk on Pop Pop. I ended up just, I ended up slapping her in the face. I don't twerk, okay? I'm, I'm a Chinese girl. I don't twerk. I just go like that, okay? There's no twerking in this household. 12 seconds later. Uh, 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 uh. What were you just watching? My meat is so fat that I can't even grip it. All right. So this is gonna be interesting. You won't actually be able to see me do it, chat, but I'm actually gonna start stepping on this with my foot. I'm going to use the heel of my foot to step on it to make it into a dough. I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna gently fold it and step out on it one more time. Stepping on it actually does make a big difference because using your hands will take forever to knead because the dough is quite dry. You don't have to go so ham. You don't have to start tap dancing on it, okay? I'm gonna do this off camera because I gotta pick it up and stuff. I don't wanna show my face accidentally. I haven't made this before, so I'm a little worried. The noodles are stuck in the Ziploc, so I'm going to cut the Ziploc and put in another Ziploc. We're doing some noodle surgery right now. I have extrapolated the noodle and I'm gonna choose one direction to fold the noodle because I'm gonna have to laminate the noodle at least once. So what laminating means is we're just gonna have to fold it into several layers. Don't worry if it's too crumbly. It will rehydrate slowly as you keep going. So I'm just going to refold it like this. I'm gonna put it into another bag. So I'm gonna keep pressing on it. So I kneaded the dough twice into sheets. So I'm going to let this rest for another 30 minutes or so. I'm so winded. And then we're gonna bust out the noodle maker and then we're gonna start rolling out the noodles. Call my ass wrinkly and not moisturized. How dare you? Part one of the soup is ready. I have this to hold the soup by itself. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take 90% of this soup out into here to hold it on the side. And then I'm only gonna leave about 10% of the soup in the pot. I'm not gonna remove anything else. And then I'm gonna fill up with more water and then we're gonna keep boiling. And then as we're topping off, as the water evaporates to make the tonkotsu, what the 90% of the soup will do is as we're making tonkotsu ramen, the tonkotsu, the water needs to keep boiling and agitating the bones to draw out the milkiness of the bones itself. And obviously as you're boiling, water, we only listen to Oni bro. Why don't you listen to this? Why don't you listen to this? So as the water keeps boiling off, um, we're gonna replace more water, more of the moisture, not with water, but with the extra soup that we have. So it will be a bit of more water, but also be with extra soup. So we're, we're gonna thicken the flavor slowly, kind of thing. Ah! Ah! Ow! Ow! That hurt. 
hurts. I burned myself. Okay, I'm gonna fill it up with more filtered water. I'm gonna get one more ingredient. I don't need this anymore. This is beef brisket fat. The recipe that I found, you're supposed to add in a slab of pork fat into the soup as you're boiling to render all the fat and like juiciness out of it as you're boiling the bones as well. My butcher didn't actually sell pork fat just by itself. I looked around and under the hot pot section, the Chinese grocery store actually had rolls of beef brisket fat. I've never actually used it before, so I don't know what to expect, but considering it's fat, maybe it's okay. I'm going to put a few pieces in to basically substitute for pork fat. So I'm just going to grab a few slices and then I'm going to put in the soup and then we're going to wait for that to boil together. And now we're actually starting the tokotsu. Everything we did earlier was prepping for the tokotsu. Now we're finally starting to actually cook it and boil it and everything. And as it boils and evaporates, I'm gonna add more of the soup that I set aside to refill the pot. And by tomorrow, it should be a really good milky soup. Hopefully, hopefully. Everyone just thinks Oni Bro so funny. Watch Oni Bro stream. You know, well, you know what Oni Bro sounds like? He sounds like this. Um, uh, hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the stream. I hope everyone's having an amazing day right now. Here's me playing Apex. Is that what you guys want? Huh? He sounds like a doorknob. He's as entertaining as a doorknob. You have no idea how lucky he should feel hanging out with my lovely personality. I'm pretty. I'm smart. I'm funny. Personality. Okay, I got it. I got the meat. I got the meat. Uh, uh. Oh, oh, that meat is so juicy. Oh, that meat is gushing. I'm drawing the meat. It's like a little baby. It's so, it's so like bouncy. Look, look at that. It's so bouncy. Look how jiggly that is. Eh, oh, oh. This is what I'm going to do. I dried off the pork for a reason. I'm going to put this in the oven now so the skin can crisp up. I'm going to let this cool down just a little bit, maybe 10 minutes or so. I'm preheating my oven right now to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 210, 220 degrees Celsius. I'm going to put some oil on this and give it an oil bath, brush oil all over it just thinly. And then I'm gonna stick it in the oven for about 30 minutes or so. And that's gonna allow the skin to crisp up really nicely. And that's why I'm kind of drying it off as well so that there's not gonna be a lot of moisture and the oil can dry up the skin and make it nice and crispy. I'm gonna make the eggs and I'm gonna strain the soup out. I'm going to move the soup a little bit and then I'm going to put this on the fire. I'm gonna wait for the water to boil. I'm gonna grab another pot so I can strain the soup out. Normally you can just strain it. It's probably a lot faster, but I already have like one of those straining spoons or whatever. So I'm just gonna take the solids out and then I'm gonna use the leftover soup to make the marinating liquid for the pork and for the eggs. So to make ramen eggs, guys, you wait until your water is actually boiling. Once the water is boiling, you put your cold eggs slowly with a spoon into the water. Because your eggs are cold, if you kind of just drop it in with your hands, the shock of the cold egg touching the hot water will risk having the shells of your eggs break. And then we're gonna set a timer for six minutes. Okay, I'm gonna make the braising sauce. Uh, sugar, soy sauce, okay. Usually tare, um, not tare, sorry, marinating chashu tare is quite sweet, so I put in a bunch of sugar. I'm gonna do soy sauce. I'm gonna grab my vacuum sealer and then we're going to vacuum seal the eggs and the tare. When you're making ramen eggs though, be careful when you're trying to peel the egg because it's very, very gentle. It's very, very tender because it's not fully cooked through. If you're not very careful, it could end up uh, breaking the egg by accident. So when you're peeling it, make sure you use a very gentle hand. Don't go too ham on it. Like don't crush it with your man hands, you know? Okay, I'm gonna plug in my vacuum. I'm gonna seal one edge first so it doesn't start leaking. I'm gonna do one edge. I can't really tell you how to use a vacuum sealer because that really depends on what vacuum sealer you're using. So just follow the instructions. If you do not have a vacuum sealer, you can just basically put the eggs in a Ziploc bag, put the sauce into the Ziploc bag, and then put the marinade and everything inside, and then drop the Ziploc bag in a bowl of water. And then the water pressure will naturally push any of the extra air out in, out of the bag. And then as you, you slowly get rest of the rest of the air out, you seal it off, and then you can throw that into the into your fridge. I'm gonna grab a ladle, and then I'm just going to put some of the marinade into the lamination bag, and then grab a little so it doesn't spill. And then I'm gonna slowly pour it into the bag. 
Be careful you don't burn yourself though. I burned myself. <laughs> so just be very careful. So if it looks like it's a little too much, I feel like this is a little too much because once the air gets squeezed out, it's gonna fly all the way to the top. So I feel like I can probably pour a little bit out. I'm gonna do this and then I'm going to now vacuum seal it. Is it working? Is it sealing? I can't tell. Did it work? But it didn't work at all. Wait, what happened? It's not working. Why? Hold on, hold on. I can, I can make this work, guys. I can make this work. Hold on. Okay. So our bag of ramen eggs, it's just going to be marinating in here overnight. And then tomorrow, it's going to take on the color of the marinade. And then it's gonna, the flavors are going to sink into the eggs a little bit. I'm going to be real. I'm tired. <laughs> I've been online for like 13 hours already. Is it okay if I buy some noodles and then put it into this? Like, I will buy the proper ones, obviously. I'm not gonna buy pasta, okay? Perfectly cooked. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna at least try. I'm gonna actually try and see if I fucked it up or not. If I did fuck it up, then I won't feel as bad for copping out and buying the actual noodles. I'm gonna cut out a wedge of the noodle sheet because I, I don't need all of it when I'm passing through the noodle maker. The noodle maker is going to thin it out slowly and everything. So you don't need a whole sheet. We're gonna need a, a portion of it. Oh, Onibro gave me a yogurt. Okay, I'm gonna drink a yogurt first so I don't pass out. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, my dough is looking kind of sussy. But I'm gonna see if I can actually pass it through a noodle maker and see what happens. A little bit of cornstarch. This is just cornstarch. Any starch is fine. Potato starch, cornstarch, whatever starch. Okay, everyone pray for me, okay? I've never used a noodle maker before, so this could be go very poorly. And it broke. Ah, oh, I'm a guy. Thank you, Hueba. Go in! Inwards! Go in! not going into the hole go in go oh what's going oh, oh it's feeding it's feeding i don't know if it's working but it's feeding all right guys i don't think it's happening i made ramen guys check it out i made ramen make sure youtube gets a load of this only thing scary about you is your unemployment all right guys okay so i i tried the ramen i failed but at least i tried it so it's fine <laughs> day two where it's kind of boiled already and sliced and trimmed and everything and then i'm just going to slice it up and then put it in my own little marinade and then we're going to boil it down a little bit and it's going to be the menma side dish that you usually find in like uh, ramen and stuff i'm just going to cut it in half like what i just did and i'm just going to slice it uh thickness depends on you i'm just going to aim for whatever the restaurant usually does which is like semi pretty thin the seasoning is actually very very simple most japanese cuisine is just basically um rests upon a few very simple ingredients which is just soy sauce mirin sake sugar salt and and then maybe like different variations and ratios of all those four um, ingredients obviously other dishes will inquire other ingredients but as far as like core Japanese dishes go, you don't really require a lot of unique seasoning ingredients. So we have our bamboo. It doesn't have to be this thin, but this is just how thin it is in the restaurant. So I'm just like, you know what? I might as well just recreate how thin it is in the restaurant. And then I'm gonna put this in here. I'm gonna add a little bit of water. You don't need to cover it necessarily because we're actually going to be boiling down all the water until it's completely absorbed into the bamboo already. So we're going to see if this amount of water is enough. If it's not enough, we're going to add more, but this is about how much I put in. It covers maybe like half of all the bamboo that I put in. I'm going to turn the heat on to low or medium or low. I'm going to add soy sauce, enough to make it salty. Uh, use your heart. Uh, don't worry about measurements too much usually with most cuisine it's however you how you like it um you can try how recipes plan it out for you but if you don't like how it tastes you can always adjust the salt the sugar whatever else and then i'm gonna add some chicken powder for some umami you can add an msg if you want as well but chicken powder is gonna give you that little bit extra like meaty meaty taste as opposed to just the umami taste i feel like adding chicken powder is a bit more well-rounded and then we're gonna add a little bit of sake this is just drinking sake but if you have like chinese cooking wine that's fine as well mirin is japanese cooking wine it's a little bit alcoholic slightly but it's also a little bit sweet so this is usually the sugar content in like most japanese cuisine along with just sugar mirin is also sweet in itself in japanese 
cuisine they use it a lot to cure meats and stuff or cook meats to prevent it from becoming too gamey tasting and stuff like that we're pretty much done the memma honestly this is all you need to do you just basically wait for it to boil medium heat low heat depending on your stove as long as it's like simmering slowly and wait until it completely evaporates so i'll show you with all the soy sauce and sake inside it did get pretty wet so once all the liquid evaporates and there's only dry bamboo left in the pot you're basically done and then that can sit in the fridge for like a week or a few days while that's happening we're gonna do the the chashu uh, i forgot to take a picture of what the chashu looks like after i baked it but it was beautiful the skin was nice and crispy and everything okay i'm just gonna cut the string off i'm gonna cut into it this has been sitting in the fridge overnight by the way so it's cold now i'm gonna put it on the tin foil here and then i'm gonna actually blow torch it to sear it but this is what it looks like it doesn't look like much but I'm gonna season it with a bunch of the marinade and then we're gonna blow torch it. But you can pan sear it as well, obviously. Don't worry about blow torching it if you don't own a blow, to blow torch. Um, but blow torching is just more fun and it's more dramatic. And I'm, I'm assuming that it's more fun to watch on stream. I will char this one and then and then I'll have Oni Bro taste it and see if it's good. And then we can always adjust as needed. My blowtorch is blue, so please ignore the chroma key, but my blowtorch is blue. This is just the tare that I made. This is the chashu tare, not the ramen tare. I have never blowtorched chashu, so this could go really, really well or really, really bad. Everyone pray, please. Okay, it's catching on fire. I don't, I don't want to burn the, I don't want to burn the house down. I'm going to turn it around, so I'm going to sear the other side. Let me go again. Let's look, take a peek at the eggs, shall we? I know you're supposed to cut eggs with floss. That's one way of doing it where you don't run the risk of kind of butchering the, the, the yolk and stuff and then having a nice clean cut. I don't actually have floss that's um, no taste to it. So I think I'm just gonna try my best and probably just use a sharp knife, you know? Everyone pray. I'm, I'm really hoping I don't embarrass myself. <gasps> Bruh. Look how jammy that is. It really it came off of my thing. I think I'd rather fuck my egg than I just have sex in general. What the fuck? I'm gonna make the noodles now. Oh, green onion. Let me cut the green onion real quick. This is only gonna be topping. It's not gonna be anything else. I'm just gonna set this aside. I'm not gonna cook it. I'm not gonna do anything with it. Ideally, you're supposed to wait until all the water has evaporated but I'm impatient and more or less the flavor is there already. I'm gonna add a little bit of the Japanese togarashi, which is just the Japanese chili pepper. And just for extra flavor, I'm gonna add some sesame oil and just like a splash. I'm gonna grab another pot. I'm gonna fill it with water and then we're gonna boil the noodles and then we can pretty much start eating. As far as noodles go, I would recommend that you get the raw ones like this, like the flour kind of noodle. If you can't find it, then obviously like you can replace it with like udon or like the ones that have been like cooked already, but like cooled down and packaged or whatever. Um, those are fine as well. This is the noodle that I made. I'm very proud of the noodles that I made. Make sure YouTube gets a load of this. When you're boiling noodles, be very, very careful and keep an eye on it. Do not walk away. They boil over very, very easily. If you're not watching it, it's gonna start foaming and then start spilling everywhere. It's gonna make a big mess and then you might end up burning your kitchen down, which is not a good idea. And once it looks like it's starting to kind of, the water level is starting to raise up a little bit, just remove the pot from the heat and let the water simmer down a little bit and then you can put it back on the heat, keep stirring, keep agitating, make sure it doesn't give it time to kind of start boiling over again. Another trick, um, keep a small bowl or even like a mug of cold water. Every time it looks like that the water starts to boil over, pour some water in there. Just a little bit pour a little bit of cold water that will instantly kill any of the overboiling that's gonna happen you see how the water was kind of overboiling a little bit just now I, I saw it so i'm just lifting the pot away from the heat just a little bit waiting for the roaring boil to kind of stop and simmer down and then put it back on the stove but i'll show you the other way so that the heat is boiling it looks like it's about to overflow in a little uh quite quite soon i have my drinking water just a splash and it instantly calms down. Did you see that? So I'm just gonna grab a bunch of noodles for myself and a little bit for Oni Bro. And then I'm just going to grab a few ladles of the 
Kamari first. I'm just gonna pour it in. Usually you're supposed to use a little spoon, but I'm just gonna pour it in a little bit. Usually it's supposed to be tare first and then soup and then noodle, but I don't want the soups to be like sitting in the hot water or anything, so I'm just doing it in the incorrect order. But I'm gonna put in the soup now. One tashu is gonna fit over one whole bowl of noodle. How am I supposed to fit three? One, two, three. And then we're gonna add in the eggs, of course. It's gonna be nestled right in there. A nice serving of green onion in the middle. I'm gonna grab my chopsticks and get some bamboo. You know what, Onibo doesn't like bamboo. I'll give him one so he can eat it. <laughs> and then I'm gonna cut one sheet of seaweed. And then one here, one here. Look! But look at that. Look how pretty, chat. Oni bro, what's the overall rating? Is there an overall rating for me? Oh wait, so the overall rating for my ramen is 9.5 out of 10? Wait, hold on, really? Sheesh! I'm gonna try a little bit of the soup first. Itadakimasu. Oh, that's really good. That's rich and meaty. You can really taste like the meat taste. Is, is that weird to say? I'm just gonna try a little bit of the noodles, the store-bought ones. Mm -hmm. Solid. Can't complain about store-bought noodles. The moment we've been all been waiting for, which is pretty much just like the chashu, right? I'm pretty sure we're just looking forward to the chashu. Mmm. Okay, let me describe this to you, okay, chat? The skin part and the fatty part is so soft and delicate that as soon as you bite into it, it just completely melts into your mouth. You don't even have to like bother chewing it for it to dissolve into your mouth. But the actual meat part, like the lean part, it still has some of the texture remain where if you eat it, it doesn't just completely disappear. So there's like a nice contrast between soft and firm. If you prefer your meat having like a fattier cut, then obviously um, just try to find a pork belly that's like a little fatter. I went with a leaner version because I prefer my meat a little bit more lean. But if you like it fattier, feel free to do the fattier version. I'm gonna try the egg now. This is the egg. It's still nice and jammy on the inside. You guys can see that. It's nice and jammy. Oh yeah. This is very erotic. It has the same like sweet and salty that the chashu has, but it's like the egg white. It's still like jello-y and bouncy. And the egg is like so creamy. The yolk is so creamy. Mmm. Mm! Guys, I'm so happy. I'm so happy I succeeded. Okay, Gibble, the outro can be me fingering the egg yolk.